Hi everyone, Thursday 14th of May. You've probably noticed I'm back in the welcome lounge foyer area. For the next few weeks, I'm probably gonna get my dear brother in Christ, CJ, to move around to show you some of the parts of our building, just to help you feel part of our space. We've tried a few different backgrounds and so it's just something we thought we'd do uh, to encourage you. I hope you're going well. Uh, we continue to persevere and uh, grow together. Uh, no doubt there's a lot of things on your mind as there is on my mind and probably the big thing you're thinking about is asking me a question. So Ian, when can we return? When can we come back? What does that look like? Great question. I'm pleased you've asked it. I'll give you some information today, but I do want you to understand that we are still a long way off from any sort of gathering that we used to have. So just take note of that. In fact, it's funny, reading Genesis 18, it's a great moment in Scripture where Abraham is pleading with God about Sodom. And I like it because in our current context, there's a range of numbers he used. You might remember the story. You can go and check it out. Genesis 18, Abraham's pleading, and he's pleading with God, standing before God, saying, look, I know you want to bring justice on the wicked, but what about if I can find 50 righteous people? And so Abraham and God have this backwards and forwards debate. What about 45? What about 40? What about 20 people? If I can find 20 people, will you save them? He gets to the bottom line. What about 10? And there's that magic number, 10, that we're hearing a lot about today. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, you should not expect any sort of gathering in our building in the month of May, even for small gatherings. Most of the leaders I talk to, myself included, as we receive information and data from our Archbishop, we want to probably get into winter to see how that goes and probably get through at least half of winter. It could be in June that we might allow and facilitate some smaller gatherings on our site midweek, maybe 10, 20, or other numbers. Time will tell, and as soon as we feel there's a right time to do that, we'll let you know. But I've got to say to you, if you're thinking that we're getting closer to gathering on a Sunday, that's just not true. We're quite a few months away before we can even gather, I think in groups like 50 or 100. Uh, a lot will depend on government reg regulations and our Dyson advice, but that's quite a while off. Continue to pray for that. Um, it's going to be, it's just going to, we need patience before we get there. So I just thought I'd share a little bit about that today. More will come. Again, I'm getting information nearly every single day about that. And so just be mindful of that. A couple of things on behalf of the nominators. Folks, if you haven't had a chance to fill in the survey, the link will be attached to the email you get today. Could you please fill that in? A special call out to our youth and young adult people. You can fill it on your phone. Uh, there's a young man, let's just say his name's CJ, he's even going to fill it in today. And so if you haven't had a chance to do it, just think about what would it be like for the senior minister, the new senior minister to walk into Fig Tree Church, to stand there and preach and there's no one in the building. That'd be quite awkward. How about you help the nominators to share about what you think would be helpful for the next leader? Can I encourage you really to do that today? Please, a lot of people have already done it. It'll be really helpful for them as well. Uh, don't forget, Anglicare folks, thank you so much for bringing in food to help out. Uh, again, non-perishable, etc., et really helpful. Uh, there's a clip here from one of our parish councillors, Anna, delivering food uh, to Berkeley. What a great thing to do. Uh, thank you, Anna, so much for doing that. And can you continue to deliver food for those in need uh, in our church uh, site? So that'll be great. Uh, biggest morning tea's coming up this time next Thursday with Joe, uh, 9.45. Ladies, you're all welcome. It's not just for those in life groups, but you do need to let Joe to know about it. So you can email Joe at uh, joe.brain uh, at her email address or indeed connect uh, at myfac.org.au. Information at the end of this uh, clip as well, just to connect. And it is a chance to give uh, to those who are struggling and to the Cancer Council. So uh, this is something we've done for quite a while. Uh, so ladies, be encouraged, get connected and come along for that as well. It's fun. I still find it funny uh, that my latest Christianity Today magazine, which I get on a monthly basis, to read words like, who is my COVID-19 neighbour? 
even though it's the middle of May, I'm still surprised by such language which I've never heard before. So I look forward to having a read about that. Who is your neighbour? Who is your COVID-19 neighbour? Please engage with those around you to, seek to encourage them as well. Uh, finally, my reflection today uh, really is tied in with another song. You might have heard it. The song's actually called Days of Elijah. You can put that in YouTube and check it out. There's a wonderful clip of US Marines. That's right, blokes. These are Marines singing this song with lots of hand movements. Uh, it's fascinating to watch them and their passion to sing this song. The song was written in 1995 by a guy called Robin Mark. Uh, it's a great song, very moving. He was reflecting on Elijah. In 95, Robin, as a, a singer-songwriter, was reflecting on the terrible disaster that happened in 94, which was the Rwandan situation where over a million people lost their lives. He was concerned about the world, looking at the world, and he started to reflect on the prophet Elijah. And I love Elijah. I love the 1 Kings 18 story about Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And, and you might remember it. Elijah was not a happy fellow. Uh, Elijah felt isolated, distant from his community, distant from others who consider themselves spoke, spokespeople for the people of God. And in, uh, in 1 Kings 18, you read this, verse 16, So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. When he saw Elijah, is that you, you troubler of Israel? And then, of course, if you know the story in 1 Kings 18, Elijah then challenges them. And it's a wonderful part of Scripture. Read it, be encouraged by it. But in regards to the song, the song's great because the writer, Robert Mark, was concerned of the trouble that was being caused in the real world in the middle 90s. And it's funny to think back now about that in our current situation. But the song itself provides a great sense of hope, a great sense of the power of the Word of God. I encourage you to have a listen to it, be encouraged by it, as I continue to encourage you weekly through these videos. Take care, God bless, and have a great weekend. First and last